Welcome back to Qs by Tinkerlist. Creating content in Qs is easy. To do so, you will create an episode. A script and a rundown in Qs are one and the same document called an episode. On the main page of your project, you will see the episode overview. You can have your active episodes, your archived episodes, and your deleted episodes. Your main working space will be the active episodes. When you are ready to create a new episode, simply click the blue button and give your episode a name. In our episodes, we see a lot of information which we can manage what we want to see and what we do not want to see. First of all, we can choose the layout of our episode. By default, your episode will be shown in the rundown and script view. This shows both side by side. Depending on your personal preference, you can switch to a script-only view or a rundown-only view. When starting a new episode, one of the first things you will do is add a main structure to the episode. This is done by creating parts. You can have a part, for example, for everything that is your show open. You can add another part for the first topic or topics of your show, another part for the next set of topics, all the way down to the show close. Once you have your parts, you can start adding items within the parts. You could have an item which gathers everything about a countdown timer in your topic. You could have an item for everything around guest one, and maybe also an item for the topic itself, which we can call topic one. And then we can add blocks. When you click the plus button or the add block button at the bottom of your episode, you get a menu where you can select from different types of blocks. When opening this menu in the rundown side, you can select from queue blocks. While using the same menu on the script side, you will have the choice between text blocks and queue blocks. Text blocks are used to add text for your presenter or host, for example, while queue blocks can be used to add different kinds of cues, such as video clips, graphics, audio, or any other type of cue you want to add to your episode. When first creating your project, we will give you a couple of default text blocks and default queue blocks. From there, you can always manage these blocks or block templates yourselves by either editing the existing ones or creating new block templates however you want them to be. This allows you to completely customize the project to your specific needs. Let's add a custom block template for an on-air, off-air block. We will create a new block type, we'll call it on-off, and let's make it a queue block because this can be interesting to see as a queue on our rundown side. We'll create our block, and all that we need in this block is a simple title field, but let's put this to be uppercase. And now we can add our new block. All the way at the bottom, we see our new on-off block. I can add it and say that we go on air. And next, we can add a video clip, which will be our countdown timer, and I can also add media to it. Let's also add a text block with some prompter text for our presenter. You can then choose to add more information to your screen. For example, on the rundown side, you can then open up your items to see the blocks that you created inside. You can even color code your items to add more visibility. Simply click the six dots in front, choose an item color, which can be a background color or a text color. So let's maybe make it teal. And now you see your item with that specific color. You'll also see that your items and blocks are numbered. This makes it easy to call out certain items and blocks during your show. If you want to discuss certain parts, items or blocks with your colleagues, you can put comments on each of the levels. You have the comment icon, when you click on it, you can leave your comment. Once all comments are taken care of, you can resolve all to get rid of them. Another way of adding more comments or notes to your episode is by using columns. Both in the rundown layout as well as the script layout, you have this plus button to show and hide columns. You'll see that there is one notes column already available, but you can add new columns as needed from the same menu. You can also show and hide your different timings in queues. We have eight different timings available for you to choose from. So depending on your personal preference or needs, you can enable or disable all the different timings that you need. On top of these timings, we also have queue mode that you can enable. This shows these play buttons and the queue overview at the top of your episode so that when your show starts, you can start queuing to keep track of timings. Other members of your team can choose to follow along with the queuing by using the follow queue function here in the top right corner. When you want to share an episode with someone, you have a couple of options in queues. 
you can print an episode using the keyboard shortcuts or by going into the menu. And printing uses the what you see is what you get method. This means that you select your layout, script or rundown and add all the columns and timings that you want to see. You can then print the episode exactly the way you see it on your screen. From the print pop-up, you can also save a PDF. A print or a PDF is of course a snapshot in time, so a better way to share an episode would be using the share link at the top right corner. Click share and access the public link. When someone opens the episode using the public link, they can choose their layout, whether it's a rundown view, a script view or even a tablet view for a presenter. Each layout can be filtered to show only the blocks that you need in that specific layout. And that is a quick overview of how to use episodes in queues.